we've moved into larger and larger locations over the years, from 100 feet to 450 feet to 1,500 square feet, the name still seemed appropriate, but now we were moving into a six-story, 12,500 square foot facility. Um, while it still had intimacy within it on each floor, it was still a, a very big place. And the name Tiny Jewel Box, to me, bespoke a small mom and pop kind of business and really that's not where we were nor where we were going. We went from being uh, Tiny Jewel Box, a descriptive name for the store, to Tiny Jewel Box, an ironic name for, for a 12 and a half thousand square foot six story business. Um, and uh, that's how we've uh, remained Tiny Jewel Box throughout all these years and uh, why I guess we're always going to be Tiny Jewel Box. One of the best decisions we made was recognizing the fact that we couldn't get our arms around our business and that we needed to make an investment um, in, in our human infrastructure to create organizational systems, um, information systems that would help us you know, manage the business that we were creating. And I think um, the investment in that person, we were able to hire a woman who was the head of operations for Neiman Marcus here. She was a magna cum laude MBA. She had a bigger business perspective and we brought her in to teach us how to do this. I was attending a party uh, at the home of the mayor of Las Vegas' house, honoring Omar Torres, who was the head of design uh, for Bulgari for many years, who was striking out on his own. And while I was there, I had recognized Harold Tibble, who I, who I knew was kind of an icon in the jewelry business. And I kind of uh, got my courage up and went over and introduced myself to Mr. Tibble, and I, and I asked him um, you know, if he had any advice for someone like myself um, just coming into the jewelry business, in a family business, um, and I, I wanted uh, you know, a nugget of his knowledge. And what he told me was that during my career there would be times where I would be tempted to let the quality of things slip, be it my merchandise, be it my communications, and in those times it was very important to resist that temptation and to hold the line on quality and that letting it slip was a very slippery slope. Um, that uh, he intimated could lead to the demise of a, a successful enterprise. And I think, you know, during the last few years, while, you know, all of us in the jewelry industry were facing tremendous challenges, you know, I heard Mr. Tibble's voice ringing in my ears many times, um, you know, while we sat around here discussing um, the fact that we needed to make sure that we continued to buy uh, and represent quality merchandise, quality brands, um, and hold the line in terms of the quality of the, the direct mail pieces that we produced, the ways that we interacted with our clients. And I think that advice um, has rung in my ears very consistently and has helped us, help see us through challenging times. I got the idea of uh, putting it on a chain around my neck. So I had this, this steel loop, you know, on a, on a chain around my neck and uh, I had a friend of mine from Italy who was, uh, was a jewelry designer and manufacturer and he came to me he says, you have to take that god awful, you know, steel loop around your neck, it looks ridiculous. And he gave me this, um, this 18 karat yellow and white gold loop that he manufactured um, and so I found a appropriate chain and put it around my neck and um, and I feel kind of when I'm working naked because I reach for it without even thinking about it and I I've saved myself um, a, a lot of money in trouser repair and replacement and uh, um, it's not a fashion statement on my part it's just a just a, a great convenience each morning that I'm here, which is most mornings, we have a 15-minute staff meeting, and that meeting can, you know, cover lots of different things. We talk to our staff about things that are going on in the store, what what I'm doing personally, um, give them the opportunity to talk about any challenges they're having, any special circumstances that they need guidance on, and it's it's just that little touch in the morning that kind of kicks us off to a strong day. Um, we all feel like we're on the same page uh, with the same goals. And that small thing, uh, I think, has made a big difference uh, in my own connection with my own staff and the functionality of the store uh, in general. Sure, I'm happy. I mean, I personally think that there's a lot of value um, in, in partnering with brands. Um, the Ritz-Carlton um, is an iconic brand, uh, an iconic global brand, and we had the opportunity to partner with them, partner with them on a bridal program where 
anyone that comes to the Tiny Jewel Box and purchases an engagement ring uh, gets sent for a complimentary night stay at the Ritz Carlton. Um, we in hand provide all people to get married at the Ritz Carlton in Washington a beautiful set of personalized uh, crystal champagne flutes um, that often become the first personalized item that that couple receives. Um, I really think that there's a lot of value for our company in partnering with the Ritz Carlton Washington DC and uh, it's made a big difference to our bridal business and I think uh, enhanced our image uh, in the eyes of our clients at the same time. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to say thank you and thank you to InStore Magazine for bestowing this, this tremendous honor uh, on our business, especially um, in the face of what I know is stiff competition from lots and lots of uh, wonderful stores out there.